What is the pillar in your life? What, what are you leaning on? How do you know where God is leading you? Is the presence of God a pillar in your life? We all, we all have things that we rely on or look to in our lives. Often we don't give these strong influences much thought, to be honest. This is what we would like to explore together and talk uh, about. What a great month of May we had so far. Hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. The first weekend was memorable with the Synergy Cup, the men's getaway, Of course, uh, the Mother's uh, Day weekend was great. Last weekend, long weekend. Now this weekend, we, have our, we are uh, having our marriage retreat. Many couples are coming from all over the place and that's why we're not meeting in person at the building. So I hope you're gonna enjoy this uh, short lesson today. Uh, you may be gonna watch it in small gatherings and by household or individually. Enjoy and let's re-engage with uh, our Thread Podcast. Today, the title of the message and the uh, episode of the Thread Podcast is The Presence. I will always remember the first movie I watched with my wife, way before we got married, actually, even before we started dating. The first movie we saw was Titanic. I know it's a classic movie, epic movie, describing a true story, uh, an amazing cruise ship. Uh, that was built and it was known as, a, uh, you know, the, the, the most beautiful, powerful boat. And some people qualified it as indestructible. Well, we know all the story at its uh, first, at its first cruise, not second, not after a few years, at the first cruise hit the iceberg and uh, sank in the cold uh, water of the Atlantic, and, and we know uh, the rest, uh, of course. Of course, There are things like this in our life, pillars that we often you know, lift up, focus on, that uh, can lead us astray. It can be our status, social status, our strength, health, wealth, Uh, education, or perhaps even relationships. What are you leaning on? Well, this is a topic that Jesus uh, wanted to focus on and, and stress as he was sharing the last moment with his disciple. During the Last Supper, we read in John 16 this, verse 4 to 7. I have told you this, so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I, didn't, I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asked me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So the context of the passage here, when he's saying first, I told, I told you this. The context is talking about persecution. How hard it's going to be for the disciple uh, when he's going to leave, leave this world. But he, he, he's now ready to tell uh, something else. I did not tell you this. From the beginning because I was with you and he's going to start and in introducing this concept of the Holy Spirit. The word the term is using is the advocate but he's really talking about uh, the Holy Spirit. So before his death Jesus gave us the most complete preview of the presence of God in our lives. He described the Holy Spirit and made the bold made the bold claim that it is better for, for, for us that Jesus is leaving this world because what is to come, the Holy Spirit, it's even better, greater than the person of Jesus himself. What does it mean for us at the end of the day? It means that we have the strongest 
pillar living inside of us that we can lean on, along with the Word of God, of course, the Bible, and the church, the follower of Jesus. We have this strongest pillar living inside of us. I have two points for us today. The first point is, day and night, God is with you. Let's start reading in uh, Exodus chapter 40, verse uh, 30, um, 36 to 38, actually. In all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tab tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and the fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the Israelites during all their travels. This is a fascinating uh, passage as we are exploring the book of uh, Exodus here. We see that the presence of God manifested itself as a pillar of cloud in the day and fire at night. And we read here in the scripture very clear, clearly that it stayed with the people throughout all their journeys, all the 40 years that they were in the desert. God is not interested in being with us sometimes only. He is not a part-time savior or helper. He is fully present. present. He is fully engaged with his people and always be there. If we ever feel distance or a lack of presence, we can be sure of that. First of all, we're the ones who's, who've drifted. We're the one who've drifted. And secondly, we can be assured that he's just waiting and hoping for us to come back. I don't know for you, but that fills me with, uh, with hope and encouragement uh, to hear this. The first Psalm of Ascents describes the uh, heart of God so beautifully. It's the Psalm 121. I will just read two parts. Verse 1 and 2. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help come from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So you see here the author of the psalm clearly, what did he lean on? What was his, his help coming from? From, uh, from the Lord, of course. Let's keep reading in verse 5 and 6. The Lord watch, watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. I, I, I love this image so much here, um, reminding God's people that God is watching over you. God is always with you. And, and the image is using here in verse 5 is the Lord is your shade. When you think about shade, it's not something we, we pay attention, we notice, but it, it's always there. It's always following us. It's always sticking to us, if you will. And, and the author is using that image to describe the, the presence of God in our life. So to go back to the scripture we, we read first in uh, Exodus 40, the pillar of cloud and fire served as a constant reminder for Israel. Imagine feeling lost. Imagine feeling, you know, uh, hopeless uh, as they were wandering in the desert. But when they were just taking the time to looking up and seeing the cloud in the day or the fire by night, uh, I'm sure it filled them with uh, a lot of faith and comfort. What can we do to remember that God is also with us day and night in today's world? I really want to encourage you to take the time to listen and reconnect with our um, thread 
uh, podcast uh, series. This week episode, it's uh, episode 23, uh, The Presence, and they have a guest speaker. It's something you want to listen very deep, and I appreciate the fact that they dare to talk about things that we, we don't always take the time to look at. The second point I want to talk about this morning is stage by stage. They journey stage by stage. We already saw that when the cloud moved, uh, Israel set out. But when the cloud settled, Israel settled. Let's let's check this out in a passage in Numbers, chapter 33, verse 1 and 2. Here are the stages in the journey of the Israelites when they came out of Egypt by divisions under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. At the Lord's command, Moses recorded the stages in their journey. This is their journey by stages. If you continue reading the whole chapter, uh, you read about all the stages of wilderness that Israel went through, but also all at the, the direction of the, the pillar, uh, at the presence of, of God. Like th this idea to record uh, stage by stage their journey was not coming from a man, but, but from God to Moses. And, and, and it shows us so much about the way God is thinking and how these same, same principles apply for us today. Like Israel, our lives is a journey and unfold in stages. And, and whether we recognize it or not, God is leading us in and out uh, through those stages. It might all feel like wilderness when we're in the midst of, of hardship. I, I get that. But if you take the time to look back, you can surely see that God has been moving and has also been moving you through the life according to his will. Just as we read in the book of Exodus, we can see the same principles being applied in our life today. As Israel wanders through the wilderness, important formation is happening at each stage. As we navigate life, it's important for us to recognize that each stage is different, first of all, and, and each stage requires a unique spirituality or approach to life with God. Often we, we get stuck when we don't adjust our spiritual life to the new life stages that we come uh, uh, our way. When we are uh, too busy, we, we're too distracted, not taking the time to recognize which stage of life we are, or when we realize, but we're not willing or not uh, putting all the energy in the focus to adapt, to be flexible, and to learn how to navigate this new stage of life. What does it look like to be a Christian as a teenager, for instance, or a college student, or a graduated student who now live as a single? These are total different stages of life, you will agree with me. Oh my gosh, when, when you find someone and you get married, being a newlywed, it is a totally different reality, stage of life, than the previous one. And uh, when you start thinking that you're uh, taking a grip of your life, uh, may you may be blessed with children. You may become a parent. And you'll see as a parent, it's a whole other uh, new reality, a new stage of life. And even when you have children, it's not like, oh, I'm a parent now. This is the 101 book to learn how to be a parent. Every stage is that your children are going through, uh, I, I really feel it, it push you to the next stage. And of course, uh, when your kids leave the house, you become an empty nester. 
and slowly uh, you move toward the end of your life, uh, either as somebody who will retire or, or, or work less. All these stages of life, um, for me, they, 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 they're just like uh, a reality today of what we can read in the Bible, like in the book of Exodus. And all of these stages, and, and maybe especially in the transition between each stage, we need to keep coming back to this question. Who's leading your steps? What is going to be your pillar in the day and in the night of this stage? Of course, it's always important to, through reading of the Word of God, through meditating and through prayer, uh, to, 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 to get closer to God, to experience His presence and, and finding answer for the new stage of life we are in. How will you know when to move forward or when to be still? What does it look like to be led by the Spirit now? I think be beyond these things that I just mentioned, I think the key is to be open, to be real, to be vulnerable. I think the key is to surround yourself with spiritual people, both peers that are going through the same stages of life, but also mentors, people who are older, experienced, that they can guide you, uh, can advise you through these new stages of life. Basically, what I'm saying here, humility. Humility is so important in order to have the faith and trust in God. We need to be humble, listening to God, experiencing His presence, but also seeking God's presence uh, through other people. So as we close here, let's ask ourselves these questions. Are, are we, are you a pillar of the presence of God for people around. Day and night, good and bad, are you showing the world that God is not up in the uh, heavens, but He's with those who trust Him to lead their steps? We are all surrounded by people who are searching for God. We know this. And we need to be reminded this morning, and as we're reading and going deeper in the book of Exodus, we have His presence in our lives as Christ followers through the Holy Spirit. We also have His Word. We have the Word of God, and we have the church. We have this spiritual temple that is surrounding us. How are we manifesting the presence of God as individuals, as families, and as a church? That's the question we need to, to talk and, and, and reflect on this week. What if we paid more attention to the presence of God like Israel was forced to do in the wilderness? What if we moved when He moved? What if we stopped and camped when He stopped? just as we uh, need a true and reliable pillar in our lives, the, the, the wandering world around us, your neighbor, family member, coworker, uh, student in your school, the wandering world around you is looking for something real and powerful. May we be a pillar of faith for our community.